This, uh, this workshop will introduce you how to use uh, React.js. So my name is Natapad Kiyabitaya. Okay. Yeah, so if you recognize from my name, I come from Thailand. Like, the name is super long. Right? And I also work as a React Native team in Shopee, the, 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 the app that has a low and a commercial that see it everywhere here. And I also do a work, Gatsby workshop before with Gawai. And also have some share on Knowledgeable, uh, React Native Knowledgeable, which is an internal sharing inside Shopee. So glad to share. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. OK. So OK, today we will, uh, this part will really focus about web development, right? Last week, you learning about how to use Node.js, right? But that one is the back end. So today is a web development, like for front end. And so uh, simply start with the HTML first. Because every web development, even the modern, the most modern one, we still need HTML knowledge. So every uh, website is built up from the HTML. And this is the first HTML site, which just built using the H pure HTML. So the purpose of HTML is just like to show the content, to display the content, like user can read. And I think this is quite a nice website. It have like a header, have a link, have a like content stuff. So it's like you can treat it as uh, ebooks, like try to push the book into the website. So, but there come the time that people want to have more customized your on your site have more spacing, more layout. So that's why they also built the CSS language, which you also learn as well. Like it's a language that declare how to like style your site. So CSS is only work with HTML. So you cannot really use with Node.js because CSS is built for HTML, right? And but these two language is really static. Mean what you write, it will be uh, same as you write. Like you cannot do some logical computation on that. Like if you write two plus two, it will uh, send out two plus two on the screen, not four. That that is why they need to have another language. So it is a, a JavaScript. So the purpose of this is a script which can be run on the browser and then can do some computation. So with these three language together, this is how people developing the. Uh, the uh, website nowadays. But uh, talk about JavaScript. But JavaScript is now is like people see an opportunity to make it strong because uh, they have a lot of API that JavaScript can do. It's called Web API. So if you see the spec of Web API, this is all the API that your JavaScript that running browser can do. Like uh, some like DOM API that you can manipulate the HTML and also like fetch API can also like vi vibrate your phone as well. Like this is quite, quite crazy stuff that JavaScript can do. So technically JavaScript is kind of connect between the HTML side and also do a fetching and also do a like uh, your CSS as well. So I can say JavaScript is super strong now, which is why you can see in the modern website nowadays, the, the JavaScript is really be a big part of the building the uh, the application. Like it's take over the HTML. Like you're writing really few HTML nowadays, right? So let's take a step back and because right now JavaScript is really big and it can be become really messy, right? So so let's take a deep breath and see what you can. What are you doing now? So if you start working like right, uh, writing some user list page, if you're writing with pure HTML, you just need to write a whole list of the HTML, uh, HTML which like this one will display the user list uh, as a uh, user card as a list. And if you really take like individually, it will see, you will see the pattern of each one. It's like one card. And this guy also same. This guy also same. So technically, everything is the same when you're writing when you're writing your application. So this one, you as the developer, you don't really want to writing a code over and over again. You want to use for loop, right? So this 
just this data, the source and the name that display here is different between each uh, in that list, right? So we replace we instead of this, we use the template to like replace the the content here, and so and then you can put this the uh, add a string inside the JavaScript side, and uh, we we create some data for our land name and then replace it and then put into the DOM. So this is actually how writing the using the pure JavaScript to like having a really uh, dynamic and fancy web application. Yeah, and as you see, it can be separated into two parts. First is the data. The next one is a template. So with these two together, it combined with CSS and then it can put into the web, your website to be like rendered as a one component. So this concept is actually really good because it can uh, make your application more clean and it's, so we call this concept uh, component. So in each, uh, each UI inside your application, you just build a component which come from template plus the data. It's also really good on the term of the separation of concern. Like the separate concern is you can really split the file into like a lot more file instead of putting together into one big file. And also it can be reusable because the template and data can be reused in any place, anywhere. Like you don't need to really reuse in your, uh, use in only your uh, application. You can use it for like other application as well. So this is how really React created. So React is building in uh, based from this concept, the component concept, which come from the template plus the data. So, but the the concept of it is the template is a string, right? The you writing the template uh, above here, and then you replace by the content. Technically, this guy is good enough, but uh, it's just a string, which means. Uh, the structure of the code is kind of changed. Like it need to be div and then span, uh, emit and span nested under the div. So this make thing like not really handy enough to work in with. Which is why uh, they instead of writing the string, they they writing as a JavaScript object. Like they do a create element of the div and then have a shield in as a image and span or something like that. So with this, this can make your like kid something similar to what you write in, in HTML, but you write it in JavaScript. And but this one is still really hard to to really like write it, right? Because you don't really imagine how come it's gonna be inside when you really run it. So that's why they introduced the JSX. We will talk uh, more in depth about it later, but it's an uh, extension JavaScript, which is we will write it today as well. This this might be a really tricky part when you start uh, writing React as well, <laughs> because as you see the const element over here is you just writing the like the HTML like tag. So this one is look like an HTML. Uh, it's not, and it's also not a string. So it's a special syntax for developing React. It's called JSX. Uh, with this, uh, it will turn when you're running. You would still need to compile it, and then it will turn into something like this. So, but but when you write it, you're writing something like this. This is why it's really handy, and like you you writing this, it will show on the on your screen like this, uh, like H1 as well. So React again, React is the uh, framework concept, uh, library concept that create the design come by the component base. So just need to mention that it's a component because we will really heard about component quite a few times through this workshop. So the concept is the UI is equal some render function of the data, right? But the data inside React is not really, uh, it's split into two things, the prop and the state. We will talk about it later as well, but this one is the word that you really need to like recognize the prop and the state. Yeah. So, overview on the app uh, on your application, right? If you're writing as a component, you're writing your app component, and then in app component, you just 
uh, use three more components like header, list, or footer. And your footer component also writing more like sub component like menu and tag. So in when you write it, uh, your application, you just need to concern what you already do. Uh, what your parent and children only one level. You don't need to concern all the things. The React will do that for the for you. So after that, you have all the component. React will construct the tree. So your application is just a tree of the component that like list down and then have all the children coming up and then build your application, build your UI from that. So this is simply uh, how React is uh, thinking and the concept of React. But the thing is, the dynamic template. Uh, why that dynamic template is the the create element that I showed before is very really slow. So yeah, it, it's slow. So React also do some optimization as well. It's called the uh, virtual DOM. But actually, this one is really, really my bro stuff that I'm not gonna talk about it for now. <laughs> okay. So today, because uh, I. Michael also say that uh, people also say that I'm really passionate about Pokemon. So let's build some simple Pokedex apps. So I kind of promise you that if you uh, you can make this by yourself after it finish this workshop. So what it do is like uh, it just there is a list of Pokemon here. You can choose the load more and then it will uh, have a list of. Uh, infinite list of Pokemon. It's not infinite. It's like 800 Pokemon so far. Yeah, so, and if you choose here, it will show the content inside here. This, like how, what is the type, and you also can type by yourself. Like let's say you type Pikachu. Yeah, yeah, and it will show as well. So this just very simple. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. <coughs> okay, so let's get things start. Are you ready? Okay, so let's start with because I think your do you have your npm running on uh, install on your laptop already? So uh, you can run two command the this one uh, npx create react apps my app. This will. So with this command, it will uh, bootstrap your project. So yeah. Okay. So let let me know if you uh, really okay with after running this command. If there any issue, just uh, raise your hand and tell me. Yes, this one. Yes, it's, it will look like this when you run.
So if you have trouble with running the first command, maybe you try running the second command, the npm install dash g create a app. And then like writing the create a app might have directly. Uh, so after you running this command, it will like showing the everything is initialized. Uh, so after you running this command, you if you you will see something like that your app is already created in this, and then you can start developing that way. Okay. So after you have seen this. You just use your CD. It's actually already here. So you CD to your app, my, my app, and then type yarn start. It will create your. Uh, it will start your server. Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, just type uh, npm start. It will create your. It will jump to your browser and then show your your site like this. Yeah, it's kind of magic. It just you just type the npm start. If you have the React keep uh, spinning on your browser.
page? Does anyone have trouble with this page? No. Okay. 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 So, if no trouble, uh, let's continue. So, if you're still stuck in the uh, installing part, you can like raise your hand and then there will be a TA coming for you. Okay, so after you get this and you also get the server running, right? Let's open our VS Code. Uh, so we, your VS Code, you just open the the folder that you just created, which in my case is inside the workshop and my app. So click open. So you will see something like this. So this is what they create for you. Uh, just a bunch of files uh, that you can really ignore everything. Just focus on the app.js. So if you open the app.js, it will have some uh, pre-defined pre uh, uh, app already. This one is the one that create the spinner and then also the text here, right? the edit source slash app and save to and save to reload. So this is actually the file that we really gonna edit it. Okay. Let's go back to my slides. Yes, uh the command you just run is a create app. It's uh like a starter kit officially from React. So yeah, so this will boost up your application. It will skip the part that you need to write all the compiler and then the bundling stuff. So it, you just start right away with this. So this is what they generate for you. But what you want to focus really just after JS. Yeah, so let's start writing uh, your first component. But before going to writing your first component, you let's pay attention on the JSEC. So as I say, right, JSEC is a syntax extension for JavaScript. And we can use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM, like uh, create a element, uh, remove the element as well. So if you're writing something like this on JavaScript, you, will ca you can create the H1 and the hello world inside the, the HTML side. But this one is really painful to, to write. That's why JSEC come to help. Like you just create like H1 and then hello world, nest it in, and then call render from React DOM. This will generate your DOM in the, your HTML page. So yeah, JSEC is not a string or HTML, it's just a JSEC. So this one is also, uh, JSEC also can do a really dynamic stuff. Like you can put the variable like this, like name is George Pierce, and then uh, call hello, and then put the name inside. So the the output will be here. So you can change as well. Like this will update it, and it also can do a uh, calculation for you. Like two plus two, it will be four. So this is what HTML gonna do, and so the point is, you need to put it under the curry bucket like this. So if you're not putting into the curry bucket, it will not doing anything. It will treat like a string. But if you put the curry bucket, it will do a computation for you. You can also do the, like a really compact function, really compact calculation that just sh you want to show here as well. So this is how really handy your uh, just act. And so important note, even you see the lender here is updated, is because we trigger the lender. So if you writing in your app, uh, you not, yeah, and you not refresh, it will still stay there. Like uh, if you edit, start edit here, 
it, it will stay there. The content will stay there until you reload the site. And so to part, because they want you to writing the your uh, syntax similar to HTML, you can also doing pass the HTML attribute like your building the HTML, like you can pass the tab in the class name or something. But the, the naming here is maybe not really familiar for you if you're writing HTML because uh, it's JSEC. So when you're writing uh, uh, HTML, right, you're writing in keyboard case, like tab dash index or min dash high. So, but because JavaScript, uh, JSEC want to be more like JavaScript, that's why they, instead of you writing in keyboard, you're writing in camel case instead. So this one is that like a big I, big H, instead of that dash A, dash I. And also the class need to be uh, use class name instead. So this is the di just the only difference between writing HTML and JSEC. And the next thing is you can also passing the JavaScript function into it. Directly, like if you're writing the uh, normal JavaScript, you cannot do something like uh, create a function and then pass a function into the DOM directly. This is really a uh, feature of JSEC only. So yeah, and we, we also use this quite often, so be prepared. <laughs> and also, next thing to mention is the, the content that you're writing here is similar to writing the shy here as well. Like you're writing uh, React is actually similar to have an attribute called children and then uh, passing the string React the, into the tag. So this one is also similar. Okay. So what they do after you're writing this, uh, when when you run start, it will transform this into a. JavaScript that browser can read because this one, if you're typing this one in the browser, it cannot be read. It cannot be compiled. But uh, before it passes the browser, it will turn to this command like create element and then uh, the name is div. Have a shield then as a h1 or something like that. And then uh, after React run, it will really generate the content on your HTML. So this step need to be done. And this one will done after because the you're using the create app to generate it. So this guy will be doing it for you. Yeah. And another rule that uh, better to know, like you can you need to close the tab. Like usually in the when you're writing the normal HTML, you may not need to close the tag, it still can show something right. But with this, you need, you, you need to close the tab unless it will be compiled. Like, and also need to close by the corresponding tag. Like H1 cannot close by div, uh, it will throw a compiler. H1 need to be closed by H1. And also, you need to, like, let's say the image, usually the image doesn't need to close, right? But in JSX, you need to close, like, this with this like slash and then the the this tag close yes so this is really neat uh, and then if you're writing a multiple line of JSX you use the uh, back, uh, parenthesis to host to group it together like this like have a div and then nested h1 h1 and div right you can writing the pen uh, the parameters to close it and group it together into one variable. And the first level, it cannot be two elements. Like this one have two line. And so the, the parent of this have two, have two tag. It's kind of doable in, in the JSEC. So you need to wrap by something like this to make it work, uh, to make it not compiler. So this three thing need to mention when you're writing JSEC. And so let's start with the create. Uh, we're getting close for creating the React component now. So we will start with uh, simply build this app, uh, this list first, but it's not gonna look like this. So, but let's start with create a function component. So in component, uh, the component inside React is just a function that return the 
uh, JSX tag, uh, JSX element. Like this is just a function that take a props and then return some the HTML element like this. And if you turn and when you use it, you just use it like uh, as you are uh, writing a HTML tag. Like if you create the function uh, function call list, when you use it, you use it at list and then just cause like a uh, uh, custom tag for you. And then it will turn into like create element list and then passing the prop down for you. So with this, you can write in your own like list first. So, and then uh, you may curious like, because your function also want to, maybe sometimes want to have a data and then you do some calculation to, uh, and passing into UI, right? So how to passing the data into your tag, if you're writing like this. So the way that is really simple as well, you're using it as a uh, attribute. Like let's say you have, you're passing the, you want to pass the name into your component. So you just do this, like writing a name and then as a string, if there is a number, you need to put a curly bracket and then uh, passing into the name age. And author can be an object as well. This one is a JavaScript object. And inside your component, if you console log it out, it will return you an object of the uh, inside the props. Like name will be mapped to uh, name will be mapped to like age also, author also will be inside the JavaScript object. So this is how you passing data into your component. Yeah, and then let's start. So let's start with delete everything first. Yes. So yeah, just delete everything. Only the class name app that is needed. And also, if you don't want the the style to pollute your site, you can also delete this as well. Take a look back. It will be really empty like this. No, no worry. We will add something inside. Okay. Uh, I guess you all done. I think it goes slower. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So yeah, just. Uh, so which which part are we guys? Are we guys at? Yeah. Yeah, that okay. Just so so when you show show a code, just leave it just on the screen so that they can see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so uh, while I was in the div class uh, the class name app, while I was inside, I just remove whatever there. <coughs> right. Then you should uh, after you're done, save it. Then you should go and you go back to you go back to the. Uh, your browser, browser. You see that it's, it becomes an empty page instead of a black screen. You want to try that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so the app.js is net uh, is under the source folder and also the app.css is also under source folder. So these two, two, just, we can delete it.
the CSS file as well. Uh, okay, yeah. Do it every single Except the first one. This step and everything else can do. So I think you can start with you have the node node.js install. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. To a little bit what we're doing, so we call the create that app. So to generate your project, it will look like this, and then we open the VS Code. Using that, it will show up this, and inside the source folder, go to the app.js, 
and then we delete the content inside. Just remain the dev class name it. And then other than that, we just remove. And then we also open the app.css and then remove the, the, all the class under it. Like this is all, all we remove. On, only this, only this left on the file. Okay, so let's create a very simple component first. We will call it header. Uh, this will be our header. So uh, doing by create a function called header. And then inside, and then inside the uh, class name app, we will use our uh, component by writing a tag called header, and then close the tag like this. So let me bring the screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So after you write it, it will show the hello world here in, in your browser. So let's say you really like have some trouble with typo, right? It will, it will show something like this. It's maybe because of your didn't close the tag properly when you're writing the JSEC. Right? If you're not closing the tag, it will show fail to compile. So make sure you close all the tag. Everyone have a hello world display, right? So before we writing more logic into our H uh, header component, let's split into another file first. So with this, we will create a new folder. We will call it component. And then we will create another file called header.js. And then we move this into this. And what you need to do is also write, uh, also holding the import React, and then export the header as well. So just. Uh, Import React. So this will be your header component in, in one file. And to use it in your app, you need to import it here. 
I will import it. We will call it header, and then got from the component slash header. Okay. This will create a similar result as previous, but we just splitting the file. Yes, uh, I believe you guys for typing a little bit.
So let's go to the next step. So next step, we will writing another component. Okay. Okay. Next step, we will writing another component called list. So uh, same way, we will create a new file called list, and then we will writing a function called like list, and then instead of uh, right now prop is empty, right? We will try to use the data that we passing from props. But firstly, uh, let's create a file called the this. Yeah, in the same folder under the component. So what, what we will do with our list, right? The, the parameter that we can passing, it will passing into the variable called props. So our list component will accept the, the attribute called items. And then we will create, the, uh, dynamically create the uh, element for each item. Like let's say our props dot items. And then we will use the map, which uh, what map do is just uh, iterate all the uh, array and then create a new array. Uh, so let's say we will do something like this and we create li by one. And then inside the, our app, we just use it by imported import list from the command set list and create pass uh, call the list with the items and passing like an array of something like one two three four five this will create a bunch of one inside our screen My phone might confuse people. Sorry. I think you better switch to the normal phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What today? <laughs> Hang on, we're changing the box. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My, my phone might confuse you guys. Uh, it, it's just some uh, dynamic of the phone. Yes. So this one is a. Uh, uh, anonymous function, right? You writing the equal and then uh, less less than to be a generator function. Okay. 
Okay, you can I catch up? Uh, okay, let's wait here a bit. Some more explanation about how map really work, right? Map is similar to you writing the for loop, like loop that i equals zero to the prop dot item. You don't need to write this stuff. I just some more like how how it works. So this one will be similar to you writing the map here. So it will create the array, and then it will loop, loop to every item inside the inside the prop that item, and then push into a new array, and then it will return an array from this. So with this, you can like changing your this list of item into list of the React element. So this one will duplicate like let's. See here is like five number, right? Because we put the the item here is like five uh, element inside this list. Like let's say it's six, seven. If we create like seven, seven item here on the on the on the browser, and this guy can change to anything as well. Like this one is just it's just duplicate the item over using the list. And also the first element that passing into the map is uh, it will be it will be each item here. So if you console log it out, it will log like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Okay, so what now is I change from one to bucket and items. So this one should should show the content that you passing from the from the item here, like this list, the item one two three four five six seven. It will generate the list on the left side here, like this.
So here what we're doing is we're saying uh, props are items on that, and then we're turning each of the items there into a list, uh, an LI uh, element that wraps around that. Okay. Thanks very for explanation. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not. I mean, it's it's an alternative explanation. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so coming to the next step. So next step, we also extract the li our function that just right into a React component called list item. So. Instead of re we returning this guy, right? We will return this item instead, and then passing the item this uh, item into the the new component that we will create. So just create a the list item component, accept a props, and then we return this uh, props dot item. So as uh, similar as this, we just turn the anything into the list item object that have a props uh, dot item to be a anything here. So you passing anything here, we will create a list item from that. Thank you. 
Folder. Let's create a component folder. And then we will put the list and this and also header with header. And just just create the header. Then you would maybe uh, you copy the header, you implement a simple header, like just copy from this linear to header, it's also fine. Okay, so next thing, because we will implement the Pokemon list, right? So uh, I ask everyone to go to the API of Pokemon, it will in the, this one, wait, uh, we open here. So the URL is pokeapi.co. So this is like a public API that you can fetch the Pokemon data. There is an example for you as well, like Pokemon slash Ditto, it will return you a really, like all the detail about that Pokemon, like Ditto. <coughs> Yes, but what we will do here, we will get the list of the first 10 Pokemon from here. So instead of the, the parameter we will be all right, we will change it to like limit 10. Uh, and if you see the result, it will, it will return you a list of the, uh, all the name of the first 10 Pokemon with some URL. So right now we will copy it over to our application. Just copy this list, like from the results. And then, uh, create a new variable here and then place it. And we will, instead of passing this list, we will passing the item here inside the, our list component. If, if you want to copy, you, you can like click this. It will be easier for copying. Like view raw JSON and the bottom of the screen, this button. So with this, you can like start, select all the thing and then copy over. Sure. 
Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. This one? Yes, yes, yes. But I will stop this first. So, if you tap back to our app, right, it will crash. But no worry, because we need to change our list.js as well. So, open the list.js, and then instead of .item, right, we will use .item.name instead. And this will uh, show the first 10 Pokemon name on the on the view. And if you didn't, uh, also don't forget to change the list. Uh, don't forget to change list item. So previously it was an array, right? Just change to the item that we just created. And then inside the list, we will call the uh, oh here list.name inside item list. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Uh, everyone okay? Like, can show this list already, right? Cool. So the next thing is we will add the little icon in front of each name. So the icon is come from the uh, this URL. So there is a Pokemon DB that also like uh, have a free icon. Like let's say it's a Ditto, it will return a really small icon like this. Uh, zoom in a bit. Yeah. So this one it will be a URL that we will use for this page. Uh, I will show you on this. Yes. So you you can just type this down first. Uh, type it down it down here inside the list item because we will put it inside the list item, right?
and then after we got the URL of it, uh, we will use it inside the image tag and put the spy here. So this one is how we construct it from using name. name. So this URL, because this URL is not return anything, you need to pass in the name of Pokemon, like let's say it's a ditto, right? Uh, dot png so oops yeah so this one we we, we will need to replace uh, like this like this one we need to repeat this guy by the pokemon name which we already got so uh, in case of this we just repeat by let's say the venusaur then it will show the it will have an image there using the name so to construct it, we will use the uh, string template with the dollar size and then the curly bracket wrap around this, like this. So this one will construct it, the URL of each item, uh, of each Pokemon, and then we will use it inside the image tag put into the source. So if you're not familiar with the dollar sign thing, it's, a, it's similar to how you write the normal thing with concat, like this. So this tool is similar. This two line is similar, but I um, mean it's easier to write this way. I'm 
So actually this one is like done for the props and create your first component already. So let's take a break first. Very <laughs> <laughs> optional. Like you can you can write in something like this and it can be like work as well. But uh, it's you need to really careful when you're writing this because if you suddenly like writing into the next like tap down into next uh, next slide, right? And then it will not really treat as a uh, similar to you you putting the parenthesis here. So yeah. Uh, so so this one will instead of return your uh, your element, right? It will return an undefined, and this code will be unreachable. So which is why the best practice for you writing it is actually putting the parenthesis here. Yeah. So if you have a another question, you can also ask like raise up your hand and then uh, so any anyone have the same question can be uh, answered together. Thanks. So next thing after after we you build your component already, right? Uh, we talk about the state. State is another value that uh, so previously there is a prop. And state is another value that also control the UI as well. Uh, but why we need state? So just to wrap up, uh, we will we will build the uh, uh, this input, and the behavior of this input right now is uh, if you typing the name that is matching the name here, it will highlight the list. So just this first, okay. Uh, so why we need state? Because uh, let, let's let's try because uh, purely when you're changing something, right? You you may need to refresh your your site to able to see an update. But you cannot do that in practical. Like you cannot tell your user to like call them and then just reload. It's not really uh, make it that way. So to build a web application, you need to make it really interactable. But how to make it interactable? So let's try an experiment. Like uh, I create the example component here. Uh, you, right, right now you don't need to type. So just see through the my example first. So this one is the example component, and then we will put it here. So our example component will be really simple to just like have a click me button, and then have you click zero time. So if I keep clicking it, I want to the number to be increasing so this is what I write for now is like the button element that have passing the on click so on click it will call every time that your your element got clicked and then inside this 
I will use like uh, pass pass to the cow. So cow value should be increasing every time. And yeah. but if I try here, even if I click, it's not really uh, updated. So let's try debug a little bit. Like uh, so. Yes, so, so you will see the console log, right? So it's actually called the function, but the, it just UI not updated. Uh, we can also print out the cow as well. Right. The cow keep increasing, just the UI is not updated. So why? Uh, why? What has happened? So you need to, so this is actually the correct behavior of the design of the React. So how you need to understand how React rendering first. So as I say, right, you're building your application from the root, which is start with app, and then you build a bundle of component under, under it. And the rendering process, uh, when you call render, it will render everything into, the, into your HTML, into your page. But in the time that some, some component want to update some data, uh, let's say our footer want to update the data, but if you only update on your JS site, it's not really reflect into UI. You need to tell React to re-render the footer component, and then that and it will make all the component under it able to re-render, and then the UI will update it. So how to do it? That's why we need a state. So uh, React have an API to uh, uh, use of the state called use state. Uh, so use state will return your uh, variable, which is a uh, static for component. Okay, so let's more uh, on this. So in our footer component, right, the props will be passing down from the parent visit app. The property will be passing down from the parent only. So for the footer component, you cannot really modify the props or any uh, object there. You just need to consume it and then use it. But only way that you can uh, individually have your uh, variable inside your component is you state. Uh, so, so what we need to do is we just turn the cons there into you state. So this will create the state value inside your component, like uh, just injected inside your component, and then you you can call set set state like set count to trigger the render from this and also update the data. So uh, let me change it real quick. <coughs> so this one we will increase now, the number increase now. How? Because previously we just call how parts parts, right? Uh, now we change to set call, and internally in the set call function, it will do two things. So first, we'll update our call value, and then we'll update the call value here, and then we'll re-render, like call this function again. So with this, it can make your UI updated things with the value here. So every so I would say that any variable, if you put it here, it will not change until you put it inside the state. And so this is the use state. The API of use state is you passing the uh, default variable. So this one will be default by one, which means the first time that uh, your component is showing, it will use this num if we use this value assigned to how. Uh, the first value here, right? First value here. The, so the first time that you lock out is with zero, and then if you call set call, it will update it and then change to this. So let's say we instead of pass by one, we pass by two. So it will also update it by two. Okay. <coughs> so is it? I uh, understand. So yeah. So you cannot use the variable if you want to sync with the UI. Yes. 
Uh, so let's code it a little bit. So uh, let's remove our. Uh, uh, let me remove my example component. So because we will create the the uh, input element, right? Uh, to uh, make people that you can type in the Pokemon name and then we will match with the Pokemon list later. So let's start with create the input element here and then passing the value into like something like value first. So if you like something like this, your, your input element will have a value like as a default, but you cannot update it even you're typing anything because this value also not uh, the, the typing anything inside the input is not really have a state inside. You need to update the state that you're passing to the, the input. Okay, to do that, we just convert the value const into our state by call use state of the hello and this will return an array which the first element is a value and next element is a set value and then in the input they accept the uh, attribute call on change so on change will call every time that that anything that you're typing in if you have like a event that sent to the uh, JS site that okay somebody type in any, something and then to, to get the value that people type in we call e dot target dot value and then we will call set value by that uh, we can inspect what e return uh, also but with this you can now type in it Yeah, so every time it will send the event called synthetic event and inside have a lot of details but you can go to the target now. Uh, the target supposed to be a your element. Yeah, so it's, it will nest it inside target.value. So you need to import it from here as well, like import React use state from the React to able to use the function.
Okay. Ah, okay, so you you all can type here right? if you update it. Is this okay? Okay, cool. Uh, let's continue. So, but right now what we want to do is uh, here our list right. If we type uh, IV saw, we want our IV saw to update it. So technically, this value. The, the value that we type here, we want to use inside our list component and with like somehow we need to check with the name that passing into the inside the list item and then showing something. Uh, let's say, let, let, let's start uh, a little bit more, like, so, oops. So we will add. We will start by adding the style into our list. Uh, but so we will change the color of the text into red. <coughs> but this one will make every every uh, our list item will be turned to red, right? But we want only the highlight one will be turned into red. Like let's say the pro, uh, so we we'll use the prop dot item dot name to compare. Like uh, if it will equal IV saw, it will be red and order will be black. So the the idea is kind of like this: like if the item dot names is equal IV saw or something that you type in, it will be uh, returned the red into color style, but else it will return black. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, it's a binary. So if you check for this, if it if this condition is true, it will return this uh, value, and if not, it will return this. So it's like a if else, but it's just uh, writing in one line. <coughs> okay, so we we just add the star here, right? And this one cannot be only I saw. We want to be any value that we just type in into our text input. So how to do this? Uh, if you see the the list item is actually nested under the app. The uh, list item is here under the app, and also the the state value of our is in the header. Is in the header. So there is a little bit of problem that. Because the value is uh, inside the header, how to how to make the list using this value? Uh, okay. So the problem is our footer or anything, right? Want to make uh, the list one want to have the data from the footer. So is it any way that you can pass the data to sibling into the data tree? So actually, sadly, there is no way to do that. So only way to do that is you passing you instead of create the state here in the footer, you move the state up into the app, so into the parent, and then both uh, parent can passing both props, uh, both data into the props, and also passing the function called set uh, set value. So you can so right now our, your footer can be manipulate the data as well. 
so this is how you like you can see the the state is only uh, passing down the value only passing down to the tree it cannot pass up cannot pass left right so yeah this is a way that you can solve it so okay this one you need to change your code now by instead of um, having the value here right in the header right now you guys have this right right now you guys have this value we will copy I mean cut it in and paste inside the the app js and then remember to import it import the use state uh, okay so right now our value and state we just passing into the the header instead of uh, header using their own state <coughs> yes, and inside our inside your header, instead of just having the use state, you have a prop instead, and then prop dot value, and then pop dot set state. So this will create a similar thing. Okay, just to recap, you move the set state here from the header here. So you move the set state that previously have the set state here, right? Uh, move to here. Move to app. After you move it inside the header, you passing as a prop. So now header will have a value dot and equal value and then set value equal set value here. So this one is another change. And the last one, our header will use prop dot value instead of from this. Like we will call prop dot value and prop dot set state. So this is a tree change.
post this week. <laughs> Okay, so if, if you're not finished, I will leave the screen here. So let's continue using our value. So the reason, the main reason that we move our value from the header into the app, right? Because we want our list to be able to use this value as well. So let's just start by passing the value into our list. And then because the value now is a value that you type in, right? So in our list item that, so if you kind of finish this, you can adding this line up. Uh, the the list uh, li we have a style so right now color dot prop uh, prop dot item dot name is now compared to the i we saw so instead of that we just compare to prop dot uh, value instead and then inside the list item we also need to pass the value into list item from from the list so. We need to pass the value down first. Okay, let's let's try save. So I think uh, it will never be anything that is highlight now because the prop dot value here is not really have a data yet. Um, because when you use it, you didn't pass the item the value into this guy, so you just need to pass it here using prop dot value. So with this, it's supposed to work like this. Okay, so what we add, we add the value here, the passing the value to, to this guy. And then again, in the list component, we passing list I, uh, value into list item as well. And inside list item, now we add a style. So if the color uh, item.name is match the prop.value, it will show it. And if not, it will show back. So just this slide that added, and also this. Uh, any question? Uh, I, I let you guys type first. So inside the app, I just add the value here, passing inside the list. Because value already be here, right? okay, then you just add this value equal value to pass the value inside list. And now inside list, we can use it. And now inside the list, we will passing the value down into our list item. And then list item can now have the value, the value that we use here. So if you forget to passing any value in, it will not showing the highlight after you type in. Thank you. 
something Okay, uh, 
let's continue a little bit more on this. So right now, right, our scenario is we passing the value call value from the app into like go in deep into now. Right now, it's like our list item. So it's actually what you need to do, and you need to remember to do is uh, is uh, we need to write value equal pop dot value into our every level to able to use it in the in the relish uh, leaf level, right? But this is not really practical way. I mean, so uh, if the list, uh, if the tree is more longer than this, your component will like uh, having this value every time you need to like passing down to children. So React also provide a way that you don't need to do that. So it's called context. So context is a way that you can share the data from your parent like inside, like a global way to share the data inside, uh, is inside the tree of the component. So let's say your parent have a prop A, and then you shouldn't want to use a prop A. You just need to put it inside the context, and you don't need to part, passing through the prop anymore. So we will do it in this case as well. So to do it, we, you will use the context API that provides from React. So you just call react dot create uh, context, and then it will be a value. So my context uh, will be an object of something, and to use it, you use my context dot provider, put it as a tree. So this will like an identifier that your value is now inside the global scope of this. So under so the every component under this can use your value now. And so, but to consume the, uh, to, to get the value is you need to do a little bit more on how to use it. Instead of prop.value, right, you just uh, call use context. That also export from React. And the value will be inside your context. So this one is uh, no need to write anymore because you already create here. But you need to call the use context and then get, uh, put the my context inside the, the use context. And then it will return your value here. <coughs> okay. So yeah, but let's go to the like, live coding. It should be more understandable. So inside the app.js, we will create a context called Pokemon. Uh, context. And we'll be a React dot create context. Uh, and so by default, it will be an like an empty array, uh, and this string. After you create it, when you use it, you just uh, wrap the the way uh, wrap your application by the context dot provider wrap like this, and then inside here, so you just passing the value inside. So now your your value from the set state will be put it in inside the context, and anyone in under your under your app it can use this value now. So yeah, so because we set the set state here, right? So the default will be a hello, uh, hello. So right now what we do is add it, uh, is uh, create a Pokemon context, and then Pokemon uh, create another element called Pokemon context.provider, and then pass the value equal the value from the use state. Again, don't forget to close the tag.
hopefully everyone can still uh, just running this without any red screen because this one is have no effect without app yeah. right now because no one is using it so inside our list this file uh, we will use the context so to do it you need to call export of this and then here we will import it Okay. Uh, again, uh, we will create a new file. Sorry. Call Pokemon Context, and then put this one into here. Inside the new file, right? We call Pokemon Context.js and we call export cons Pokemon Context equal React.create context. So instead of uh, just using it right away inside the app.js, we need to import it from the file uh, and typo on this. Yes, so you can import it right this as well. Why is this one not in the components? This one? Uh, because in our list we want to use it as a consumer, right? So so this this object need to be accessed by app and list. So, but there is um, some problem about when you import thing, like circular thing, it will not really able to resolve. So you just need to extract the value into a new file. This is a good way. Yeah. Yeah. So you see from here that the app has import list from components of this and then inside of this the list means something uh, for the context the list also has to import from the end so that is something we want to avoid so the list that we want to import from the context okay so I so previously right the Pokemon context is created inside the apps but uh, in our list we want to use Pokemon Contact as well, uh, but the problem is the app.js now import from the list like component set list. We cannot writing like uh, the list to import something from the app.js. So this is like the app will import the list, and now list will import the app. So this is a circular dependency, which is uh, will uh, create a trouble like something not initialized. So the, the solution is we export the thing into a new file. Like what we do here, like create a new file called Pokemon Context. And both of them import from that. Thank you. 
So, is it is it uh, already to this step? Like everybody can be following this step already, right? So next step, we will use our value from the context. So inside the list.js, we will also import the Pokemon context from from our file. Uh, Pokemon dot context from dot slash Pokemon context, and we will use the use context. So. So to use the value from context, you use the use context that we import from React, and then passing the context con here into our use context. So the value here will be similar to the value inside the props already. Uh, let's try. Yeah, so I, I lock out the value here, and you will see the value here is matched together with this. So this is how to passing the data inside uh, using context. Okay. Yeah. 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 Use context, just passing the context from the create context here. So, uh, so the context that you passing is the context that you passing is from Im import from the Pokemon context after you create. Thank you. 
Yeah, I think after we finish this, we break again. Can I take your mic? So I'm hearing a question. Uh, a lot of us. Um, are running into this uh, use context is not defined issue. So uh, why that happens? So if we do this, uh, okay. Okay. So if we're doing this now, we're seeing use context is not defined uh, because use context is an API from React. So there are two ways we retrieve use context. One is we can say React dot use context. And if we say this, we, what's my other issue? Okay. And now we have the use contact uh, as uh, <coughs> a method from React. Or uh, alternatively, when we import, we can say we're not only importing the default export by React, we're also importing another API uh, called use context. Um, this way, we're retrieving use context from from a deconstructed import. So now we have the import here. If you're running into the same problem, here is possibly why.
Just got duplicate this. So. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so now it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
like just now we had a, like had a discussion like like uh, the context like does it has has to be value can it be anything yes can it be anything yes like, uh, you mean you mean inside this yeah or yeah. this one yeah. this name or yeah. this name this. Oh, this name need to be value. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, like if you use a uh, like a previous time, uh, you use that state like the uh, 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 object uh, key value. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Like so, like we were trying to change it, give it a more meaningful uh, name. Uh. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there is a question about like what why. Uh, the value here can I change to something else, right? Like can be maybe Pokemon or something. Actually, it's no because this one is I uh, need to be a value, which is because the provider component is consume the value only the value property. Only this the value that you passing in can be changed, but this one cannot be changed. Okay, because this one we didn't write it the the. Uh, React already write it for you, and it read from the value of uh, the, uh, value attribute. Yes, but this one can be changed. Like uh, you can be writing like a Pokemon here instead. Uh, this guy needs to change as well. So this is totally can be changed on the the variable here, and here also we can change here as well. Okay, so uh, let's say we change to Pokemon, and uh, but right now our comparison comparison still compare with prop dot value, so we next step we will try to get rid of the prop dot value that passing into list. So the first one we remove this guy from this, and also remove the value that passing into the list item here. And inside our list item. Instead of use prop dot value, we can use the Pokemon variable. Or previously, it's a uh, value, the variable name value. Okay, so just get rid of the value that passing from the props. Yeah. So, oh, so basically, we remove T part, the list, this one, and also list item, and also the comparison here. So 
Okay, let's continue. Okay, so another, uh, this one is kind of almost the last one already about React. So the last part will be about the life cycle. So right now you have uh, understanding how, how your application flow, I guess. Uh, now, if you take a look at each component, they, they're going to be the, we can divide into three parts. The first time that your component is rendered on the screen, is we will call it mount. Uh, so why this one is important? Because React will know that, okay, your component is going to mount in the first time. We will create the element, the real uh, HTML element for you in the HTML site. And then after that, uh, every time that like prop is updated, state is updated, uh, it will only re-render, it will update it. It's not really remounting, remounting all the HTML. So it's just changing your value. And then after that, if your parent, like the, the parent of the component, is decide to not really like take your, uh, just take you out, like not showing you anymore, we will call it unmount. So this is all common in life cycle, like it's like born and then get older and older and then suddenly after that you die. <laughs> so yeah, but with this one, uh, because you also, sometimes you also need to know something in the middle, like you, you cannot only uh, rely on the, only already, like before it updated, sometimes we want to hook into the middle after it, before, uh, between it updated, like, so we can compare between the previous data and the old data, and then we react something. So with that, we can use another uh, hook, it's called use effect. So the example is, let's say we are gonna set the document.title to be something. Uh, every time we click on the button, it will keep, uh, keep setting the document.title. Okay, so this is uh, another example. You don't need to add it up, uh, add it into your app yet. So the purpose of this, the, the first time that we call, we will call document.title equal count and then uh, count zero in the first time. So this is happen ev the with use effect is happen every time your component is re-rendered, but is not before the component render. It's after. Uh, what does it mean? It means so if you console log here, uh, a and console log, and then uh, so 
A will not call in the same time as B. Uh, B will not, not call first. A will call first. So uh, let's see this guy here. So you will see that A call first and then B call uh, after that. Because use effect is like a callback for every time your component render. Like, uh, after it return, after it already return, React already finished rendering, it will trigger the use effect function here. What, but why you need to do something here after it re render, right? Because uh, usually you want to put a really complex stuff after your UI already show it on the screen, right? Uh, if the UI show bank page uh, until your complex stuff already done, and then it, it might be too late for user to see it. So usually you will render first, and then after that, after your render finish, you do something. So in this case, we will set the uh, uh, document dot title equal uh, how or something. So it will show here. If you don't see the the bottom here, it will show how zero. And every time that I click, it will increasing. See, it. yeah, it's now six. Yeah, so this is a simple use case of use effect. So yeah, this, but uh, moreover, use effect is using in a lot of case. And what we will do right now is we will use it to fetch the Pokemon data. So to fetch it, uh, we will use the fetch API by calling fetch and URL. And then if we return the promise, uh, if you not really know about the promise, promise is like an object that uh, it will call the function then after it finish. So the promi uh, promise can run a really long stuff, like let's say a one hour stuff, and then it, if it's done, it will call the it will trigger the then that, and then call your function after that. And and then why why you need a promise? Because in the meantime, you can do something else, right? You don't need to wait for it to finish. Like loading the data is like take one second. You don't need to wait for it. You can just create a promise, and then if it already finished, it will trigger your function, uh, the then function here. So this is how you fetching. But uh, so so we will create the screen on the left side here. Uh, if it's go down, you will see the the Pikachu name and then the type of the Pikachu, which is like Thunder or something. Yeah. So again, we will use the Pokemon API to fetch the data. So uh, I think in the example also do it already. The select Pokemon select Ditto. So if you change Ditto to like something else, it will also return you the data, the whole whole uh, detail of that Pokemon. Uh, and this one we will use for the types, which we will display the type. Which right now, the Pikachu is electric. Like other is like have other types from here. So this is what we will do. This is the, the example of the calling API. OK. So let's try, let try testing the fetch function first. So we will write in the fetch function uh, inside the, the app.js. We will create a function called uh, fetch Pokemon. And then the input of this function will be a name. So it will be a name of Pokemon. And we will call the fetch. So with this guy is quite tricky, but you don't need to import anything. It will already be there. So you just copy the URL from here, the Pokemon V2, and then Pokemon plus by the name.
so with the fetch function, it will return a promise. So to to get the value from it after it finish, we just dot then and then this function will trigger after it finish, uh, and it will return the response in the first argument. So yeah, response. Okay, and then we just try to call with a uh, simple Pokemon, maybe this though first. So we did, it will execute right away, and after it's done, it will console log it out here in the last point. But there is a bunch of detail here which we may we not use. So to extract the data that you see here, there is another promise you need to call. It call uh, what you will do is the response dot json dot then, uh, and then will be a Pokemon, and then if we console log it out, it will be a detail of Pokemon now. Yeah, here. Yeah. So this function is passing all the the string into a JS, uh, JavaScript, JavaScript object. And then, because it's a really compute, uh, really complex computing stuff, that's why you need to return uh, another promise for you. And to use it, again, uh, it's another then. OK. And then if you console log it out, it will show the detail here. After you run it, mm, sorry. To, to spawn this you are this page right you right, right click on this and then click inspect right, and then go to the console it will come to this page okay so is it empty then go to inspect and then show the console it will show here after you refresh you will see the object like this.
Oke. No, it's not it's not showing anything yet. Okay. So uh sorry. So before break, let's try to create another like our sidebar that is showing the Pokemon detail before break. Okay. So to to writing it, just create another component. We will call it Pokemon component. Or maybe like Pokemon details also okay. Like Pokemon. And what we will show inside is a uh, name of the Pokemon. And then we will display all the type of the Pokemon. Right, types dot yeah. map. So this is will be like uh, the Pokemon will accept two things: the name and the type it as a prop, and then we'll use the type to generate the the UI from that. So we will render the Pokemon our Pokemon here uh, beside the list, and then the name we're passing the. Uh, Pokemon value inside <coughs> but this is not really complete yet because actually the type is not come uh, the, the data that we already have we need to fetch right but we already like writing the fetch function so we will copy this guy and then use it here and instead of uh, we just fetch and then console log it out we need to set inside the state of this component. So before setting, before able to use or set it, you need to create first. So just uh, by, do it by create a, uh, another new state value that uh, it can be empty for now, like empty object, maybe now. And then this will be a Pokemon detail. Then set Pokemon detail. And inside this function, we will use the hook to able to fetch every time the name is changed.
Okay, so this is our new line that we added in. It's a Pokemon component which will have a state called Pokemon Detail and we will use the use effect to fetch, to trigger the fetch. And uh, after the, the value is coming, we will call set Pokemon Detail of the value that is passing from the, the, the API here. And this is new thing that you just passing this, uh, it's called dependency. So it will trigger only when this guy change. So if the name is changed, we will fetch again. Uh, just that. And uh, here, instead of using dot name directly, because the first time, right, is not having any data. If you call Pokemon dot name directly, it will crash your app. So you need to check by uh, check the value of the Pokemon to be uh, not empty, and then you can call Pokemon dot name now. Uh, and same here as the Pokemon dot type. So verify a little bit. The oops. Button. Yeah, so I think this guy is. <coughs> mm -hmm. When you load the response, you will see what it is. Can you log the response? Yeah, also? yeah, yeah, sure. This is an uh, object. Oh, okay. okay, sorry for trouble. <laughs> oh. Okay, so uh, previously just some reference that is not type dot type. It should be type dot type dot name. So it's uh, depend on the API response that we just need to go to the correct correct uh, level of the API. So with this, it should work. If you type the IV saw, it will show the IV saw here, and then it will show the type of this Pokemon, and also highlight the list as well. So actually after this, we will break first. So we, you can catch up on this and then after finish, you can grab a coffee and some more 
ทำมาฟูดเอาไซด์เลดชิลเราใช้ like some string and if you turn explanation มา double explanation มา it will turn into a boolean so right now it will return true but uh, let's say it will be zero if after it will uh, use the double exclamation it will turn to false because the zero is equal to false or maybe like some empty string is also false or like now also false Yes, but if it have a value like an object, it will return true. Actually, we run a little bit of time, like a lot of time now. So this one is, uh, so the purpose of next slide is also just uh, create an infinite list, like uh, that. I have the example. Okay, but uh, I think this one I also have a. Uh, document writing inside our repo already, so you can take a look and then you can go through the step by step. So next one, we will talk about like how to use the React Dev Two. So th I think introducing this one make you more understanding about how it really works. So if you not really install it, you can use my link inside my slide, or also can search the React Developers Two. Inside Google, the first one should be the the Chrome link that go into this Chrome extension, and click Add to Chrome. It will install it. So to use it, you open the the Inspector mode, and then inside of. So when you start, right, you will have two more tab, and if it's not showing, uh, usually is like if it will show like around here. So you can click click on that place, and also it will show this kind of screen, and so so it will look like this. So this is instead of 
you need to go through like how your component is rendered and then debugging. So with this, it will uh, uh, show how React really render your component. So your app function have a div, and then inside our div have a header, and then the list, and then there is a Pokemon, and then the list have a, a lot of list item, and uh, in, li in each list item have a li tag, and then inside have an image. So yeah, so this is much more, I think it's easier to debugging, because you can also see through the list item that can, what prop that passing into that. So let's say something is missing, like, uh, like your Pokemon doesn't show up. So you can see now that the prop is now hello, and the state is now. So if you start typing it, like I we saw, now the prop should be I we saw here. And then after it finished the fetching, the state should be an object. And you see here, like the what is the object that is inside that tag by using the developer tools. So in case that you have some crash, you can also see through like, okay, because I'm referred to the wrong object or the, the object is somehow empty at that moment. So this is how you use the repo to the first tag called component. And it's, it's also highlight like what is really this showing, uh, it's showing this, what is really the UI that matching this. Yes. And the next one is also really nice. It's called profiler. So this one will do a profiling on your application. Uh, simply start by kick the profiler, uh, start profiling. And then you do some interaction like remove and then typing something. And kick here to stop the profiling. So this will show like a graph that which one is re-rendering. Like how, how it's really render like this state as only render the Pokemon. This one is re render. And also you can inspect like what is changed. Right here is like hook change or something change. So this is to use case of the developer tools. But most of the time it's like the this page is really like really handy for you guys to to debugging. Like C2 the prop is already very good enough. Yes. So if you have some issue on this like why it's not showing, you can also download this and then you will see that okay. This prop is now, that's why it's not showing, right? Okay. So this is the, uh, how, how you're using the profiler in uh, uh, the React Dev tools. So this one, the next thing is like asset and style. Because actually, I would say this one is almost after you implement all of this, it's almost complete of your application already. Like to to make it look like uh, wait to make this one turn to the Pokédex that I showing is just putting more style into it. So how, before you adding the style, uh, let's change the Poké the header here into an image. So uh, let, me, let me find my slides. So I already have the image. So to use the image, you just call import and then dot slash. Like actually, it's just how you find the image, like image dot svg, and then import it, and then use inside the image tag source, passing it directly. So this one is uh, is not provided by React, but this one is provided by the Create React app that you're using. So you can import image directly and then put into the props here. And then it will show the, the tag. So this one is my logo that I'm using in my application. And next one is a styling. So to styling, uh, you usually just use CSS. Uh, you, you cannot really uh, write, if you refuse to writing CSS, you're not really able to create your app like that. So, but the problem of the CSS is, uh, is this global CSS. Like you're writing it anywhere, you just apply to whole page, and 
is have a chance that you can collide and the class name of the CSS, it can collide with somebody that writing something inside your page as well. So which is why there is a library called CSS module that turn the global uh, nest of CSS into the localized one. And it's also provide, you can also use directly inside this, uh, the create app. So to use it, you just import it right away like this. Like, but the file need to be dot module.css. So with this, um, it will turn the, your let's say you're writing the dot screen and then background is red, right? It will the s that you import from it, it will be an object of uh, and some like transformation of the name to some Pokemon dot uh, uh, screen dot some random string. So with this, this can make, uh, so with, if you're using this, it will always refer to your styles. It will not refer to anybody else. So this one, uh, we can just go through like how it works. Uh, okay. Let me open the repo. So this is my compute repo, like how it really done. So you will see here that I import the Pokemon.module.scss, uh, right? And our Pokemon.module.scss is just writing the class here. And let's say we, I want to apply the class name called container inside. So usually you just call the container as a class name, right? To apply the style into that uh, object. So instead of that, you just call s dot uh, dot container instead because uh, because s will return some normal uh, some name namespace plus your style. So with this, is make sure that you can refer to your uh, correct style. Like no one will be like have the same name as you. Yeah. Okay. So. Actually, the main thing that I done is come from this CSS, which uh, really handy. It just have a really nice eight bit pixel for you. So yeah, it's actually almost everything is already done. Like the button, the mouse also change. The also have a container as well. So you just go ahead and then go to the readme. Inside the readme, you will see the link here. So you just copy the link here, and then inside your application, in the app.css, I mean, I oh know, in the index.css, you just import by uh, using this like URL instead. Like with this, it will import your CSS and apply your to your application directly. And after, I think if you're adding this line, you will see something change on your site now. And what I just need to do is like apply some font and then apply the style of the next table to, to make it show sim uh, use the to use the CSS that I just imported. Yeah, so actually uh, let me try run it. Okay, so with this, it's just a CSS. Like to to draw this guy, it's totally a CSS. Like some op, some box with some color, and then have a border that is a pixel. So that is all is uh, CSS. But the main main point is you be able to build the data and then get the data here. Like if you click the Charmander, it will set the state, and then show here. So yeah, so it's about time, and if you guys have a time, you can also put some effort to writing this uh, page as well. Uh, it take me like two or three days to build this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a challenge for you after this. <laughs> yeah. And also, and the last thing is how to 
like make everyone know your that you're building this right so i so luckily we have the uh netlify so what you need to do is just uh let's say if you want to build app you just call uh, npm dot <coughs> build uh, npm build or yarn build it will generate your app from the because i already say right the the fa the language that you write is a JSX. It cannot be run in the browser. You need to transform it first. So with calling the build, it will transform it and then save into somewhere. But with Netify, it's make it easy. You just go to Netify, uh, make sure that you have a Git repository. You upload it into the Git. And you log in with the GitHub. It will show like you can create a new site with Git, call Git. Uh, it will like have some authorization inside Git, and then it will pull all the repo that you have. Like, let's say you go to Tech Ladies, and then Bootcamp, and then yeah. So this one, you don't need to type any uh, command. Identify all already detected for you, so you just click deploy the site. It will deploy the site to like, and then give you a URL. So this one also really easy to do. Like just. Go through the step that Netlify told. Okay, so technically you have a site online after this. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 